In this video, I'm going to be breaking down one of my favorite portfolio performance metrics, the information ratio. And let me tell you a little bit about why I think this matters so much. In the finance, specifically the asset management industry, most of the industry functions in this way. It's an actively managed fund. So it's someone telling you, hey, I will charge you a certain percentage of your money every single year. And in exchange, I will build a portfolio for you of stocks that I have selected or picked that should outperform some sort of benchmark. You know, a common benchmark would be the S&P 500 index. And so what they're really saying is I can do so good picking stocks that not only can I match the performance of the S&P 500 index, I can go even further above that and outperform the fees that I'm charging you on top of that. And then I should go even further above and beat the excess of the fees above that performance. But in truth, at least in recent history, most funds have not been able to do that, most actively managed funds. And so even Warren Buffett is a very famous proponent of Main Street investors, just your average folk. They should just buy index funds like an S&P 500 ETF. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can dive into Excel and analyze an ETF or mutual fund or any sort of actively managed portfolio that you're looking at potentially investing in and determine, hey, is it worth investing in this? Or should I just go straight to the index fund that is the benchmark that they're saying they can outperform? So let's dive right into it. To get started, we're going to need stock price data. Now I have grabbed the adjusted close prices for SPY, which is the most popular S&P 500 ETF. Um, it tracks the S&P 500 index. That will be our benchmark for this video. So it's going to be our point of comparison. We're going to basically be saying, hey, should I have invested in this, the SPY, or one of these other actively managed funds? Now, the two actively managed funds I chose are ARK. And so ARK is run by Kathy Woods. It was very famous a few years ago. It's all about uh, disruption and buying these uh, a lot of tech stocks or even other strange asset classes. I think they had some Bitcoin holdings at some point. I don't know. So we'll be looking at that and it has a like, high expense ratio. So that's why I picked it. They're going to charge you like almost 0.8% a year to manage your money in this ETF. Um, and then I also picked AGTHX which is one of the most popular um, actively managed mutual funds for large cap U.S. stocks. So naturally for this mutual fund, the S&P 500 index SPY would be the perfect point of comparison. So to get your adjusted close prices and why I specifically do adjusted close prices is because it includes the effects of dividends and stock splits. So if you want to see how this stock really did over the period of time that you're interested in, you need to look at adjusted close prices and not just the normal prices. And I'll show you how I grabbed the SPY prices. So I went to uh, Yahoo Finance. And so I can go into this search bar here and just type SPY, hit enter. Now I can go over to historical data, select whatever time period I'm interested in over here. So I grabbed like a 10 year period or something like that. And then after I selected that, I just hit download. And then I took all the adjusted close prices and pasted them right here in Excel. And I did the same thing for these other two. Now that we have our adjusted close prices, we can calculate our daily returns. So this is quite simple. Each daily return is just going to be equal to one day's return minus the previous day's return. That gives us the change in price divided by the previous day's price, which gives us the percentage uh, change in price. And then I can drag this to the right. Now I'm just going to hit control C to copy all three of these, hit control down arrow, and then hold shift to grab all three columns and then hit control shift up arrow and then control V to paste the formulas. And now we will have our change in price for all three of these funds uh, for every single day. And now we're going to need to calculate the portfolio return minus the benchmark return for each of our two portfolios that we're interested in. And I'll get to why we need to do that a little later on in the video. So let's set this equal to ARC's return for the day and then subtract it by the SP500's return for the day. I'm gonna hit F4 once 
twice and three times, I need to lock in the column, but not the row. Hit enter. I'll drag this formula over. So now we have the uh, amount by which ARC either overperformed or underperformed SPY for that day. And same with AGTX. And then we can take these, hit control C, hit control down arrow to go to the bottom, hold shift to ho uh, highlight both of the two columns, and then control shift up arrow, and then control V to paste. And now we have the extent to which each of these funds overperformed or underperformed the SP500 for every single day. Now we have all the basic information that we need to calculate the information ratio. But before we can calculate the information ratio, we need to calculate the annual return of each of our three funds and then the tracking error of our two separate portfolios that we're measuring for. And in order to calculate the annual return, we're first going to need to calculate the number of days in our entire sample period. And that's gonna be quite simple. We can just say equals, and we go grab the final day by hitting control shift down arrow. And then we subtract from that using control shift up arrow or just control up arrow to grab the very first date, hit enter. And that tells us that we have 3,381 days in our sample period. And now we can use this value to calculate the annual return, which I have put the formula over here. The annualized return is gonna be equal to this math symbol here just says the product. So it's gonna be the product of one plus all of the daily returns. And we put that to the expression of 252 divided by N, where N is the number of days in our period minus one. And the reason we use 252 is because 252 is the number of trading days in a year. So by taking 252 divided by the number of days in the sample, we're really just scaling it for how many years are in our sample. So let's calculate the annual return for SPY, which is going to be equal to the product of one plus all of the daily returns for SPY. So we can go over here, grab this, hit control shift down arrow, then close that with a parenthesis and then put it to the exponent of, it's going to be 252 divided by the number of days. I'm just gonna make this visible so you guys can see the formula. So 252 divided by the number of days. I'm gonna hit F4 to lock the number of days in place. And then we're gonna subtract one. And this is an array formula. So you should hit Control Shift Enter and you'll see those squiggly brackets pop up on either side. And then we can just drag this to the right and now we have our annualized return for the SPY, ARC, and AGTHX. Right off the bat, we can see that AGTHX did better over the last 10 years than the SPY in terms of just annual return, whereas ARC did not. We have to calculate the tracking error of each of our two portfolios that we're interested in. And the way you calculate tracking error is you just take the standard deviation of the excess returns multiplied by the square root of 252. And the standard deviation of the excess returns is going to be easy to calculate. We just do equals standard dev and use dot s. Use dot s because s is sample. And this is truly a sample of the returns. And so remember over here, we calculated the portfolio return for each of these minus the benchmark return and we had just subtracted by SPY as the benchmark return. So I'm gonna hit control shift down arrow. So for ARC, I've got all of the returns. And now, as I said with the formula over here, we need to multiply it by the square root of 252. And so the reason we do that is if we didn't multiply by the square root of 252, all we would have is the standard deviation of the excess daily returns, but really we want to annualize it Whereas and whenever you need to annualize a standard deviation, if you have daily returns, you need to multiply it by the square root of the number of trading days in the year, which is 252. So let's hit enter. And so ARC's got a tracking error of 28.34%. Let's hit control C, and then we can just paste this right here. And AGTHX has a tracking error of just 5.8%. So a lower tracking error tells you that this portfolio performed closer to the SPY, which we should expect because the AGTHX uh, fund just trades in large cap US stocks, whereas ARC ventures off into various uh, different asset classes. And so really when you're using the information ratio, it's best to pick a benchmark that most closely matches the fund that you're looking to compare to. Now we can calculate the information ratio 
which is just going to be the excess return of the portfolio over the benchmark. So it's going to be the return on the portfolio. So we'll start with ARC minus the return of the benchmark. Let's hit F4 to lock that in place. And then you divide by the tracking error right here. We can hit enter and then I will drag this over. So right off the bat, we can see that ARC has a negative information ratio, whereas AGTHX has a positive information ratio. So this tells us that AGTHX performed SP500 or the SPY, it outperformed in terms of annual return, whereas ARC underperformed in terms of annual return. Both of them are somewhat close to zero. So I think a good information ratio would be one that is quite a bit higher than zero. And so the best information ratios that you can get are ones where you've got a very high annual return that far outseeds the benchmark and also has a very low tracking error, so it tracked the benchmark well. If you are studying for a CFA or FRM exam, then Analyst Prep can be a great prep provider for you. Their custom study courses offer video lectures, concise readings, and custom practice problems, and you can compare how you're doing to your peers who also use Analyst Prep. Now, if you're interested, you can get 20% off using the promo code RYAN20 when you click the link in the description or the pinned comment and put Ryan20 at checkout. Now, thank you for watching the video and have a great day.